you guys welcome back to my channel so for today i just wanted to go over the post processing work i did for my past video on the wine i meant to include it on the past video but i kind of wanted to do two separate videos and have this be its own thing and i just want to walk over the different techniques i use for the, the post processing work um so that's what this video is going to be about um so i hope you guys enjoy and tag along and you all will we'll see you again on the next one First thing I like to do, you can put this in flash. Um, ideally, you want to have a um, some type of gray card that you could use to measure it. Um, here, since this is a white card, I'm just going to measure it um, until it's kind of even. Kind of the target neutral. Blues seem to be a bit over. And then I'm just going to take a bit of blue out, which I did. Oh my gosh, now it has two little blue. Five, nine, five, nine, two, five. Let's see. Yeah, that works. I mean, that's as close as it's going to get. It's a bit on the bluer side, but um, I will do for now. So let's go ahead. Second thing I like to do is correct the distortion on the photo. Yeah, and this is going to be a super light edit. Um, honestly, mm -hmm. you could do so much, but I'm just going to do a quick, quick light edit on this. I'm going to increase my highlights a bit. There's still info here, so it's fine if I push that a bit. Um, let's increase our contrast. Um, I don't know, 30. Sounds good. Clarity, let's do 30 as well. That might be a bit too much. Again, whatever feels like, whatever feels okay, you guys to your eye. That's what you want to do unless you're working with a brand company or whatever and they have their own style, then you want to match theirs, but for your own stuff until it looks good to you. But that looks great to me. That's a beautiful label. That's why I kept it. Such a cool wine bottle. Okay, so that looks fantastic to me. It's a bit on the bluish side, so I'm just gonna... That was, that was a bit too much. Let's keep it where it was. Okay, that's fine. Right click, right click, shift. Select, sync. We're gonna sync all this together. I'm not cropping. Ooh, that's another thing I didn't mention. Okay, try not to do cropping and close. Focus and set your camera, match everything to match what you're wanting to do and it's close enough. Just so one, you're not you're not gonna lose any any good resolution, you know, quality in the photo, you're not compromising any of that. And nonetheless, it's the less work that you have to do. Pose. So now that we synced all these, I'm just going to go over to library. Let's go ahead and open the dashboard on. This is the second take. It's the first time I didn't record the screen. So export. And then, while well, that is exporting, let's take our middle photo of the sandwich. And, uh... Is that a bit too bright? No, I'm double guessing myself. Is it a bit too bright? Nah, I think I think it's fine. It's okay. I'm gonna say style. So let's take the middle photo, and you're gonna edit in Photoshop. Yes, you can transfer images from Photoshop from Lightroom to Photoshop and back. You don't have to export and all that. You'll see why I export it in a minute. Let's wait for this to um, to load. Are you guys liking these videos? Or are you just bored at home with nothing else to see? <laughs> okay. Let's wait for the photo to load up. It's gonna take a quick minute. Um, let's give it a second. Until it loads. Alright, 
So command J always. You're always gonna wanna duplicate. Um, let's go ahead and pull through this. Boom, perfect. Why are you here, dude? There you go. Okay. So the reason why I exported the photos was because um, I'm going to import them from here to there. So let's do the first composition very quick. We're going to drag it over. Okay, I have my Photoshop set up to automatically um, open as if JPEGs were raw. Um, so that's why I popped up. Okay. There you go. So line up your photos. Make sure they're matching. The photo that's gonna be kinda on top of the sandwich, if that makes sense, it should be the first one. And then you're just gonna hit the brush. Anything that you paint in black will show the bottom layer. So it's almost like if you were erasing, but you're not, you're just painting the bottom, whatever you want from the picture, the information is gonna paint it onto the main photo, like we said. So for example, I wanna bring all this catch light to here. So what I'm going to do is with my brush and black, I am going to bring that up. Oh, capacity is in 30 something. So, so I don't want that. So let's go. You see, it almost makes me want to have the picture again. Okay, so whenever you have a reflective surface, make sure there's nothing on it. You see this right here? That is the sticker on my reflector. So whatever, it's fine. Now you know, make sure that your reflective surface does not have anything because it will show up in your product. And you do not want that. So I'm gonna bring this to the bottom. Let's see how the bottom behaves. Okay, I, I do like that. So let's bring that up to Oops. here, and then you can lower the brush. Yeah, I like that. Dang it! Okay, so easy fix to this. No need to worry. Um, you can just use your clone stamp tool and head here to the bottom and just stamp that on the top. Yep, a thousand times better. Okay, so remember, take all stickers off your reflector devices that you're using. Okay, so now we have that first one. So what I do is I'll group it and I'll duplicate it. You always want to save a past, you know, process of, of the composition you did, and then you can press Command E, and that's gonna turn it into a, a new photo and now um, let's go ahead and bring the background photo the script light alone shot oh my gosh there you go Boom. okay in my case again I have it to always open up like if it was a raw. Your Photoshop might not do it that way, so don't get freaked out. If it doesn't, it's easy to change it in your Photoshop preferences. Oh my god, it's not. Boom, perfect. No. no. You gotta make sure it's precise, because otherwise it will not work, okay? Alright, so same thing. Bring the top photo of the sandwich to the top. You are going to create a committee mask, mask layer. You're going to select your brush. 
and I will just go here and take this part off and I'll increase my opacity because I'm sure I want to take this out. And that is it. That's basically how you do the composition. I do want to do one last thing. This is just me being a bit picky. And again, it's not a super high end edit that I'm doing here. It's just a kind of a general what you need to know, what you need to do to have a good product shot, right? But this is an extra step. I like to take my patch tool and just go around and anything that might bother me out of the bat, just take it out. And that's it. The only thing I want to do, there's a bit too much light on here, so I'm just going to take my burn tool and just darken that up. Especially here. And just a bit too dark for my taste. And there we have it. Then you're going to hit save, command S for all my shortcut gurus out there, <laughs> which I'm not saving. I might take a minute just because I have so many layers. And then it'll automatically be here somewhere. And this is our final product. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. That's perfect. I might have done kind of a bit more light on the top to separate it from the background, but that's, you know, that's gonna do for now, so. Well, that's it for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed how I, I made that, that wine bottle happen and the different techniques I used. If you're interested in seeing how I made my past uh, watch photo, if you haven't seen it already, you can check it down on my Instagram, which I'll link below. Um, it did take a bit more editing and post-processing work, took a bit more time, but if you're wanting to see how I, even, how I did the shot and merge the photo together after finishing in the comments, I'd be happy to make that video, but for now, I'm going to leave it up here and enjoy the rest of your day and see you on the next one. Bye.